exceptions to the octet rule. Of course there have to be exceptions. There's exceptions to every rule, right? There are different types of exceptions. Um, the first one is um, free radicals. These are molecules and ions that have an odd number of electrons. If you have an odd number of electrons, it's not possible, no matter how you arrange them, to get an octet for everybody. Free radicals tend to be unstable and very reactive. And you've probably heard of react, uh, free radicals in terms of um, skin and aging or um, you know, exposure to toxins or various things. You don't want free radicals in your body. The reason that they're so reactive is because they have an odd electron, they don't have an octet, and they're going to tend to react in a way that will complete the octet. So let's draw the Lewis structure for no. It's one of my favorite molecules. Um, we've got enough room over here in this white space. So that's going to be nitrogen. OK, we're back. Nitrogen and oxygen. How many valence electrons total do I have? 11, 5 plus 6. This is an odd number. So. I'll just do my best. Two, four, six, eight, ten, uh, eleven. Well, that's not good. Nobody has an octet. So let's move a lone pair. That's better. Now, the, this nitrogen has an octet, and the oxygen has seven. We could draw another one where the oxygen has the octet, and the nitrogen has seven. Right? Um, we really, I, I drew a pair. I have a pair right there. There's another one. There. What? I don't know. Anyway, um, we, really, we really can't do any better than that. So what we're going to do, because the Lewis model just can't handle this. And nitrogen monoxide does exist. It's, it's a component of air pollution. What we're going to do is we're just going to do our best. It's not going to be perfect, but we'll do our best. And we want to place that odd electron so that we minimize formal charges. So on this nitrogen, what's the formal charge? Negative 1. So if I, if I cut that in half, it's got 6 here. It came with 5. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. And what's the formal charge on the oxygen? So got one, two, three, four, five. It came with six, so it's plus one. And then let's compare this other one. Formal charge on this nitrogen? Zero. Because here it's got five, so formal charge would be zero. And on the oxygen, the formal charge will also be zero. So this is the winning Lewis structure. It violates the octet rule. It does. Any questions? Odd electron always has to violate the octet rule. Another way that um, molecules violate the octet rule is an incomplete octet. So there's an even number of electrons, but they just don't make an octet for one of the atoms. And this tends to happen with smaller elements, like boron. So let's look at boron trifluoride. Boron tends to form compounds in which it has only six electrons. So we get boron, and we got the fluorines, and we've got a total of three times seven valence electrons for the fluorine, that's 21, and the boron has three, no, five, three, three, sorry. Boron has three, so that's 24. 
So I've already got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. This is the correct Lewis structure for boron trifluoride. You're like, yeah, but the boron doesn't have an octet. No. Boron is one of the smaller atoms. The smaller atoms have smaller expectations, and they're more likely to be OK with not having an octet. If we look at the formal charges here, what's the formal charge on the fluorine? Zero. And the other fluorines are the same. What's the formal charge on the boron? Zero. So that says that, well, they seem to be OK with this. Could we draw this so that it does not violate the octet rule? We could. We could. We could make a double bond. Let's do that and see what happens. We could do that. Well, that's sloppy. Kind of match the fluorine. We could do that, right? That doesn't violate the octet rule. But what do formal charges tell us? Now, what's the formal charge on this fluorine? It had seven, seven valence electrons, and here it owns six. So the formal charge is plus one. These guys are the same as they were before. They're zero. What's the formal charge on the boron? Negative one. The other structure that violates the octet rule is better because the formal charges are zero. Let's go back to, there we go. So that's the correct. What we observe is that boron trifluoride tends to react in a way that will complete the octet on boron. But this is the correct Lewis structure for boron trifluoride. Beryllium is another element that also tends to have incomplete octets. You find him on the periodic table. He's over there next to lithium. You might say, well, beryllium is an alkaline earth metal. Shouldn't he be making ionic compounds? Well, yeah, he should, but sometimes he makes covalent compounds. Because those little guys, they violate the rules sometimes. Any question? So we had smaller than octet. We can also have larger. These are called expanded octets. This can happen for elements in period three and above. So period three, um, the nonmetals in there will be silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, and larger. Period two elements never do expanded octets. They, they physically cannot. What makes the expanded octet possible is that we can utilize the d orbitals. Second period elements, there is no 2D orbital, and so they can't do this. Let's draw Lewis structures for arsenic pentafluoride and sulfur hexafluoride. So arsenic, and we're going to have five fluorines around it. And if we add up the uh, valence electrons, we've got five for arsenic. And well, this is getting more complicated. Five for arsenic and five times seven for the fluorine. So that's 40, right? So I've already got two, four, six, eight, ten in there for bonds, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. This looks like it would be wrong. But I dare you to write something better. If we moved, I mean, the only way we could get an octet on our stick is we moved one of these fluorines to be bonded to another fluorine.
but we've got so many electrons here that that's still going to violate the octet rule. There's nothing else we can do. If we look at the formal charges, they're all zero. Arsenic pentafluoride is okay with this. So arsenic can do that. Let's look at sulfur hexafluoride. So we've got six fluorines. Each of them has seven valence electrons. Six times seven, 42, right? Yeah. Plus six, 48. So we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48. Both of these are stable compounds. They violate the octet rule. We just have to be okay with it. Any questions? The other theories will show us what's going on with arsenic and sulfur and how they can do this. It will make more sense then. Um, let's look at sulfuric acid and look at formal charges with and without an expanded octet. We can draw this one either way. And what we'll find is that you know the formal charges tell us to expand the octet. So I'm going to put sulfur in the middle, but not like that. I'm going to put sulfur here and put the oxygens around it. I'm going to save all the trial and error angst. And put hydrogen here and hydrogen here. I, I drew this off to the side just because it wasn't going to fit down there. Actually, I could, I could squeeze it in. It's less confusing. It's, there he is. Total number of valence electrons, um, two from the hydrogens, six from the uh, sulfur, and four times six from the um, oxygens, 24, 32. So I've already got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. Like, great, it worked out. Awesome. Let's look at the formal charges on that. Formal charges, we're going to cut all the bonds exactly in half and see who gets what. Again, we can kind of ignore the hydrogens because they're going to be zero. This oxygen up here, what's its formal charge? Negative one. Um, this oxygen over here, also negative one. Um, this oxygen. Zero. Remember, oxygen has six valence electrons, and in this structure, it's owning six. Two, four from the lone pairs, and one each from these bonds. That has a formal charge of zero. This one's also going to be zero. What about the sulfur? Has six valence electrons. You subtract four. It's plus two. Okay, well, not great, but it looks nice, right? Octet rule. Love the octet rule. What could we do to lower the formal charge on, an ox on the sulfur? A positive formal charge means this sulfur does not have enough electrons. The negative formal charge on these oxygens says they've got too many electrons. So if we take one of these lone pairs from oxygen and make it a double bond, in terms of formal charge, the oxygen loses an electron, the sulfur gains an electron. That's going to help both of them out. So let's do that over here. So these guys were good. 
right? We can also tell kind of by looking at that this oxygen has two bonds. He likes that. This oxygen has two bonds. These oxygens only have one bond. They're not so keen on that. So I'm just going to replicate this over here, and then we're going to move some things. So I'm going to take one of these lone pairs and move it in here. And I'm going to make a double bond that's violating the octet rule for sulfur. But sulfur's a big boy. He's in period three. He can handle it. What does that do to the formal charge on this oxygen? It goes to zero. So that tells us we're doing something in the right direction. And what does the sulfur have for formal charge right now? Plus one. So we're getting closer. This one's still minus one. So what we need to do is take one of its lone pairs and make another double bond here. And that changes the formal charge on this oxygen to zero. And the formal charge on the sulfur now is also zero. And so now all the formal charges are zero. Does that make sense? Formal charges can guide us to the correct Lewis structure. Without formal charge, we'd say, well, that's good. It, you know, obeys the octet rule. That's what we were told to do. But the formal charges tell us, no, that one's not so great. So here we have the correct structure. So period two elements never have expanded octets. When do you expand an octet? If you need to lower the formal charge for period three elements. And we're going to see that on like phosphorus and sulfur. And in period four, five, six, that can happen as well. Any questions? Write the Lewis structure for xenon tetrafluoride. Well, it's probably going to be xenon in the middle with fluorines around it, right? This is one of those rare noble gas molecules. Let's count up valence electrons. Um, we've got four fluorines. Four times seven is 28. And then eight for the xenon. So 36, right? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 36, 28, 30, 32. Hmm. I've run out of places to put those lone pairs. Where could I put them? I can put them on the xenon. 34, 30, oops. 36, 30, no, 30. Six. <laughs> Good grief. 36. There we go. Like, oh, that looks kind of weird. What about the formal charges, though? Each of these fluorines has two, four, six, and one of those, seven. Fluorine has seven valence electrons. So all the fluorines have zero formal charge. Xenon has eight valence electrons. And in this molecule, it has two, four, Five, six, seven, eight. All the formal charges are zero. Xenon is period five, right? He's big enough for an expanded octet. Let's look at phosphoric acid. So here we have phosphorus surrounded by oxygen. And each of the oxygens, except one, it's going to have a hydrogen. So we've got 24 from valence electrons from the oxygens, and phosphorus has 5. 
and then we've got 3 for the hydrogens. So that's what, 32? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two. Looks good, right? Gotta look at the formal charges. Formal charges are tied in very closely with what I showed you earlier about the number of bonds that an element likes to make. Oxygen likes to make two bonds. And what we find is that if oxygen has two bonds, it has a formal charge of zero. Its formal charge is not zero if it only has one bond. These oxygens that have two bonds all have formal charges of zero because they own one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. So that one's zero, zero, zero. This one has a formal charge of what? Negative one. Formal charge of negative one. What's the, f what's the formal charge on the phosphorus? It's gotta be plus one. We can get zero formal charge on both of these by expanding the octet on the phosphorus. We're going to move a pair of electrons from oxygen to the phosphorus and give the oxygen then two bonds. So let's take, let's maybe take that guy right there. I'm going to move him up here. Mm, that doesn't show up very well. Now the oxygen has two bonds and its formal charge is zero. What's the formal charge on the phosphorus? It's also zero. So you expand octets on period three and larger if it gives you zero formal charge. Questions? 